again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 30th of January, 2019. Article posted on Out. Black Monday, Sunday's Showtime. LGBTQ plus hate crimes are on the rise in numbers and severity. What happened to Jesse Smollett is hardly an anomaly. It's a disturbing reality. On Tuesday morning, news broke that Empire actor Jesse Smollett had been hospitalized after two people physically assaulted the actor, fractured his ribs, tied a, a noose around his neck, and poured bleach on him. Hmm. In a statement, the Chicago Police Department confirmed that they are investigating the incident as a quote-unquote possible hate crime. After the assault, the New York City Anti-Violence Project released a statement emphasizing that Jesse is not alone. In his experience, gay black men are among some of the most vulnerable to violence in the LGBTQ community. Good thing that Big Mike and Barack have Secret Service protection, huh? And the data backs up NYCAVP statement according to the latest numbers from the FBI. The number of hate crimes reported nationwide rose from 6,121 in 2016 to 7,175 in 2017. The most common types of hate crime incidents were based on a victim's race, 59.6%, religion, 20.6%, and sexual orientation, 15.8%. Of the 7,175 hate crimes reported, 7,106 were single bias incidents, while 69 were based on more than one bias. The FBI defines a hate crime as a criminal offense against a person or property motivated in whole or in part by the offender's bias against a race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender, and gender identity. NYCAVP 217 report on a hate violence also shows a disturbing trend for LGBTQ people who experience violence. While the FBI hate crimes report comes from data culled from law enforcement agencies, NYCAVP's report is comprised of data collected at nationwide anti-violence programs and LGBTQ people who report hate violence to the AVP. AVP's annual report cited a 20% decrease in reported hate violence, meaning that fewer people have reported their experiences to AVP, not that there were fewer hate-motivated crimes. In a statement to OUT, AVP said that the normalization of hate violence could be behind the decrease in reporting. People may be less inclined to report less severe incidences as they become a regular occurrence, the organization wrote. That does not mean violence against LGBTQ people itself is lessening. On the contrary, in the same year, we saw the highest amount of anti-LGBTQ hate motivated homicides in over 20 years of tracking hate violence against LGBTQ people. Yeah, you know, look what happened to the Boy Scouts of America, huh? While the number of hate crimes reported to AVP has gone down, the crimes that were reported were more severe. In 2017, AVP recorded 52 hate violence related homicides, the highest number ever recorded in 21 years of data collection, and an 86% increase from 2017. Of those victims, 71% were people of color. 52 were trans or gender non-conforming, and 40 were trans women of color. The number of homicides of LGBTQ gender men increased 400% from 2016. Four incidences in 2017. 20 reported homicides. Hmm. The rates of violent crimes involving weapons, sustained injuries, and required medical attention increased as well. 46% of LGBTQ people who experienced hate violence sustained an injury, up from 31% in 2016. 42% sought medical attention, up from 23% in 2016. 
and 27% reported that their attackers used weapons, up 13% in 216. While Svamlot said he does not know his attackers, that is actually outside the norm for LGBTQ people who experience violence. According to NYCAVP, 57% of LGBTQ people who experience hate violence know the person who caused them harm, usually a co-worker, 22%, a relative or family member, 21%, or a landlord or neighbor, 20%. Hate crimes most often happen in a person's private residence, 29%, or workplace, 24%. If you or someone you know has experienced harassment or assault, you can report it to AVP on its website by calling 212-714-1141. Like I said, folks, I think the fundamental problem is that it might be because it's almost always in our faces. You know, and it wasn't before that crack smoking Sunni Islamic extremist, fudge packing homosexual Muslim bastard communist Arab Barack Hussein Obama moved in the White House with Big Mike. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. The American people are getting sick and tired of it. You know what happens to homosexuals in Saudi Arabia? They get thrown off of buildings. I was actually amazed when Obama went to Saudi Arabia. You know, I don't think he took Big Mike with him. That would have probably been not a good idea. Take a look at the article. Pass it along to your like-minded friends. Let me know what you think. You sure as heck know what I think, don't you? The link will be attached.